So two weeks ago, I unboxed this, a fake Galaxy Note 7, and today we're gonna try to figure out if it's any good. So if you watched the unboxing and impressions video that I made for this little guy two weeks ago, link in the description below, or click the I, I don't know what side it's on, then you probably know that I really, really like this phone. It's a very solid replica, it's very hard to tell it apart from the real deal, and it kind of just feels well made, I guess. As far as build quality goes, I did have one or two issues. Now what they tried to do with this phone is put a curved screen on it without actually using a curved screen. So you may be wondering how they did that. Well, basically what they did was they took a regular old flat LCD screen and then they put a really, really, really thick piece of glass that's also curved on top of it. Now this piece of glass is actually so thick that when you're using it, you can tell that you're actually touching the glass about two or three millimeters above the actual surface of the screen itself. Not to mention that when you look at the home button, depending on your light angles, you can actually see a shadow that it casts on the rest of the bezel. That being said, however, this is probably the sturdiest ow, oh God, that hurts. piece of glass I've ever seen on a smartphone. The thing is rock solid. When you push on it, you do not see any screen sort of wobbliness that you might see on other phones. However, while the front of the phone might be solid as rock, weirdly enough, the back of the phone is actually kind of soft and mushy. Now, if you apply any pressure at all to the back of the phone while you're using it, you will see those LCD ripples on the screen. And it's kind of frightening. You know, when you put it down, you see ripples right around where the camera bump is. It's, it's really kind of scary to see that amount of screen rippling just with the minimal amount of pressure that it requires to actually occur. Even more than that, if you take out the little stylus, which this actually does come with, you can see the screen ripple where the top of the stylus is. That's kind of scary. You can tell exactly where the stylus is in its little sheath because you can see the screen rippling around it. However, while we're on the subject of the stylus, they did actually do a fairly good job here. Now, while the stylus itself isn't anything really to talk about, it's kind of just a little piece of metal that works on this phone screen, but for some reason, not on any other screen that I've tried. Can't explain that. They actually did a very good job of replicating a lot of the features that the actual Note 7 has. Now, when you take the pen out of its little sheath, it makes like a little sort of sound, and you can actually see the little button that you know you can click on to access those features. I think it's actually very, very cool that the fake makers decided to actually put a sensor inside the little casing for the stylus so that it can actually tell when you've taken it out. Another feature that they tried to replicate is the iris scanning technology. Now if you saw my video about the fake Galaxy S7 where they had a fake fingerprint reader that basically was just a capacitive button, which this also has as well, by the way. The way that they've done the iris scanning technology is a bit dubious, to say the least. So you can register your eyes in a very quick amount of time, and it works very regularly. So you're thinking, oh wow, that's amazing. They've done a really good job. However, a couple of circles on a piece of paper will tell you that basically all it does is look for two circles that fit in the templates. You could unlock it with two magnets on your refrigerator. You could unlock it with the headlights of your car depending on how far away it is. Or you could just draw two pieces, of, two circles on a piece of paper and call it a day. As far as the other sensors and circles on top of the phone go, they're just paint. Now as far as the software experience, it's a pretty standard Android 6.0.1 experience. There's really, you know, I, there's really nothing to say. It looks almost identical to the actual Note 7, even down to the wallpaper that they've chosen. It's exactly the same. So there's really nothing that much to say about the user experience. 
except for the fact that, well, it is buttery smooth on all of the menus and things, you do run into a bit of processor lag when doing certain tasks. By certain tasks, of course, I mean stuff like scrolling through menus, opening up different browser tabs in Safari, or basically anything that might involve the processor at all. One other thing on a more cautionary note, recently articles have come out suggesting that cheap and fake phones like these have actually been collecting uh, user data and sending them back to China. Now, there's no evidence as of yet that anything sort of malicious has occurred with this stolen information, although it might be worthwhile to, you know, use use an alternate a spam account, maybe don't log into stuff like your uh, online banking. Now let's give a rundown on the spec. So I actually downloaded a third-party application because I don't trust what this phone reports to me at all. So the battery on this guy died a couple days ago and I restarted it and turns out if the battery dies it actually clears the phone storage. I'll come back. Ooh. So as far as the specs go, we're rocking a quad-core processor clocked, apparently, at 2.2 gigahertz, which seems a bit much considering how slow it is. We're also rocking a 720p screen with a pixel density of 320 pixels per inch. I have to say, it actually looks quite good. I'm not sure if the pixel density is right on, but it is a very sharp looking and very bright screen. As far as storage, we're rocking five whole gigabytes inside this baby. FIVE! That's ten. As far as RAM goes, it's it's half a gigabyte. It, it's 512 megs, and that's, you know, that's kind of what's expected from a phone like this. The camera, also as expected, is 5 megapixels with a front-facing camera of 1.2 megapixels. As far as charging on this thing, we do have USB-C, although I don't know what USB-C they're using. I don't know if it's like some fake charger that looks like USB-C, although I don't know why they would bother to do that. But whatever it is, it's unbelievably slow. Alright, you, you don't understand. This thing takes like 14 hours to charge. When it died, I had to charge it overnight and it was still at 98% in the morning when I woke up. It is a really, really, really slow phone to charge. This one's like 90%, 95%, it's probably about an hour of charging. I don't know what they were doing. It's only 1,000 million battery, it's 80 more seconds long, especially with the battery drain, it's going to get charged, so it's not going to get started anything, it's going to be out of battery at the day. I'll tell you that right now. Now, there's a very important question. Is this better than the real Galaxy Note 7? Now I have to say, as far as build quality, obviously the answer is no. But, I have to say, however, when comparing this to the actual Note 7, we do have a bit of an unusual situation. Certainly one that we didn't face with the Huawei P9 and the Galaxy S7 fakes that I reviewed, because the actual version of this phone is quite famous. As it turns out, not for its features, which they have tried to copy, but for a certain incendiary characteristic that it possesses. So in that regard, I must say, the fake Galaxy Note 7 is better than the real Galaxy Note 7 for the sole reason that it does not catch on fire. Are you kidding me right now? So thanks guys for checking out this video, the link to purchase the fake Note 7 will be in the description below, though I do caution against using this as your primary device. So as usual, make sure to subscribe for more videos, make sure to leave a like down below or leave a dislike if you're very angry and I'm bothering you, and make sure to check back next week for a new video.